Hey YouTube! Today I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how you can replace the front lower ball joints on your 1998 Honda Accord V6 or similar generation Accord. Um, a lot of the Hondas, uh, including the Civics um, and various Accords even up to current day, um, you know, quite a few of them at least have a serviceable draw joint. Uh, and the lower one is actually quite easy, so in this tutorial I'm just going to show you how to do the driver side lower ball joint. Um, it's essentially the same for the passenger side, uh, but I'll walk you through the various steps. Properly apply the parking brake and block the rear wheels and jack the vehicle up from the central jack, uh, jacking point stand, uh, which is just located right here relative to the front bumper. You'll see it's a little bump that sticks out from a lower uh, support cross member. Once the vehicle has been jacked up to a sufficient height for the tires to clear the ground, Support the vehicle properly with a set of good quality jack stands. Remove the five lug nuts holding the wheel to the vehicle. So once we've got the wheel removed, we can sort of see the entire steering knuckle suspension assembly and ultimately what we need to do here before we do any disassembly of the knuckle is to ensure that we unbolt the brake caliper uh, assembly which is this bracket here that holds the actual caliper and the brake pads to the hub assembly. Um, so on the back here there should be two 17 millimeter bolts uh, that we'll remove. We'll also need to remove any of the brake lines and ABS lines that are attached to this uh, sort of steering assembly right here. Um, and then uh, one of the things, the tips that I find that makes life a lot easier uh, when we're taking these things out is be prepared, have a wire ready uh, so that we can hang the caliper once we unmount it from the uh, steering knuckle as well as um, if you noticed earlier, I had jacked up the vehicle from the center jack point so that both the front wheels are off the ground. Uh, reason why is that I'm actually in fact replacing both lower ball joints on this vehicle, but also it allows me to turn the steering wheel so that uh, this uh, rotor uh, can actually turn this way so that I have easier access to get an impact gun to the back to remove those 17 millimeter caliper bracket bolts. Do not forget to disconnect the AVS wheel sensor assembly right there. It's held on with a single 10 millimeter uh, bolt that I've removed and it can be quite tight because of the corrosion so you're going to want to use a small screwdriver lots of WD-40 and just sort of wiggle that little piece out um, if you break that that'll cost you a pretty penny to replace so after giving this a gentle twisting action back and forth I actually managed to uh, to remove the ABS sensor without damaging it so as you can tell there's quite a bit of corrosion in here so It'd be prudent to make sure that all the rust is cleaned up and to apply a little bit of chassis lube to the outer edge of this uh, ABS sensor cylinder so that it slides back in with ease. Next step is to remove the actual caliper assembly. So I've turned the front steering wheel all the way to the left so that it gives me more clearance in here to fit my actual impact gun to remove the 17 millimeter caliper bolts right here. So I just use a piece of copper banding, you can use a rope, a string, a piece of stiff wire. I'm hanging the caliper essentially just off of the upper control arm. Uh, next step is going to be is to unbolt the axle nut uh, while the vehicle uh, is still assembled because it's just easier using a, I believe it's a 36 millimeter axle nut socket and then followed by the removal of this um, fork assembly right here so I'm going to unbolt this 17 millimeter bolt and nut combo here as well as removing the actual fork pinch bolt uh, which is actually just located um, right here and then once that gets unbolted this will wobble loose and then we can then proceed to go remove the um, upper uh, castle nut affixing the upper control arm to the uh, steering knuckle so I've removed the suspension fork uh, or unbolted it off of the shock assembly so right now you can see that's kind of loose and wobbly so I'm just going to wiggle that out drop that off fish it out through here and then the next step actually what I'm going to do before I remove this upper nut is to also actually remove the tie rod on uh, just because it's nice and easy to take out right now so it just makes sense to do it that way using a pair of needle nose pliers on the 
uh, steering arm, uh, just straighten that cotter pin right there, as you see that's all bent around through that little hole, remove it and then use a 14 millimeter wrench and some WD-40 to remove that. I stand corrected guys, I made a minor boo-boo, I told you that it was a 14 millimeter um, not it's actually a 17 um, so that little cotter pin was quite painstakingly difficult to get, difficult to get out because it was all rusted um, but basically I got it loosened um, I actually got it off cleaned up all the threads and actually re-threaded this 17 millimeter nut back onto the end of the tie rod and the reason why if you notice that I didn't screw it all the way up is because I'm going to use a hammer to just gently tap this so that um, this tie rod end pops off now the reason why I didn't want to expose the actual threads was because you don't want to damage the threads, otherwise you don't have to replace this tie rod end. Uh, but it's a lot easier to replace a nut if you kind of mangle it a bit. But it shouldn't require a lot of effort to remove, you just kind of give it a tap. And if it doesn't want to come loose, you can kind of give this end a hammer, just to break it off, just give this gentle tap here. And the whole idea is you just want to break that corrosion uh, loose. Um, but uh, just give it a, fir a few firm wax. You don't want to pound it because if you pound it, you will actually damage this. So, um, you know, use some discretion, lots of lubricant if you need to. So after some liberal application of WD-40 and a few good blows with a uh, mini handheld sledge, and make, make sure your blows are, are firm, but not overbearing. I don't know how to describe that better, but you just got to play with it. And I also sort of, you know, whack the end of it lightly just to loosen up the uh, rust on it cleaned it all up and it came up nicely. We're going to do this next which is the upper uh, castle nut. Same thing it's held in with a cotter pin, probably rusted in so uh, make sure you have some spares on hand uh, as you'll likely need to replace them. But this uh, castle nut here is a 17 mil but we're actually not going to loosen it completely. What we want to do is remove the actual cotter pin first, loosen this castle nut until this top part of the actual castle towers just you know reach just slightly past uh, the end of this control arm uh, upper ball joint uh, and I'll explain why when I uh, remove it. Okay, so I've removed the cotter pin and surprisingly that was quite easy. Again, using lots of WD-40, I uh, managed to loosen the 17 millimeter castle nut and as you can see it just extends slightly past the threads and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a hammer and I'm going to whack these wings right here, not here where the screws go into, but these little nubs right here that that, that uh, were cast into the steering knuckle. And what we want to do is we want to create enough shock, I guess so to speak, to sort of bump this this piece off. And what happens is that this nut will prevent this thing from just kind of ripping off of the upper ball joint, which could potentially strip or gouge the threads and then essentially damage it. And because the upper ball joint and the upper control arm are sent as a single assembly you'd have to go and replace this whole piece if you broke it so this will prevent it from careening off of the ball joint uh, you know saving you a whole bunch of heartache uh, when it pops off so uh, basically the te technique that we're going to use is we're going to whack it here we're going to whack it here and we're going to it here um, depending you know how bad it is sometimes you need to put in a whole bunch of oil and stuff like that to uh, to get it all softened up. You can really ever so slightly just tap that um, castle nut, like, but I mean, you don't want to bend any of those little bumps sticking up above this nut, otherwise you're gonna need a new castle nut, and again, you could potentially damage the upper ball joint. So, it's actually off now. So, it took a solid good, probably, a good probably seven or eight minutes of just some serious hard whacking, making sure I don't nail this. And right, you can even see some of the bang marks, you know, from my little mini hand sledge. But uh, keeping in mind that I didn't want to damage any of these mountain holes for the uh, ABS sensor cable and what have you. So now that this top section's out, axle bolt is out. Next thing is to remove the lower cotter pin uh, and loosen the castle nut, and then using a ball joint separator to remove this knuckle, and this whole assembly will essentially just lift right off the car. So I removed the cotter pin, you can see a little hole there. We're going to use a 17 wrench and we're going to basically back this off and then essentially install a ball joint separator and jam it in between there and then just tighten until the whole assembly pops off. This is my ball joint separator and it's a fairly simpleton tool and basically what this is is that it's going to jam underneath that rubber boot on the ball joint and then this little finger here is going to wedge that ball joint right through the lower knuckle. Um, on my particular car, um, I'm actually just 
going to replace the ball joint so I don't really need to put a nut on the end of it to fear about damaging the lower ball joint it's bad anyway so I'm going to wedge it in through here uh, it'd be prudent to put some grease on that tool in these little fingers so that if you don't want to rip your boot um, just finesse it in very carefully before you pound it off and basically all you do is that once it's wedged in you tighten this bolt and that applies this pressure to it'll apply pressure until this goes point and it pushes it right over the knuckle that's what the tool looks like installed and we're going to tighten this bolt down on the whole joint separator and then it just it'll pop and pop out so when I was cranking this bad boy down it made a loud bang and it popped out and of course there's some grease that kind of spooched out of there from the old ball joint and basically I'm just going to use a hammer very gently with some WD-40 sprayed in there and then tap this out and lift this entire assembly off the vehicle. If you sometimes can't get that axle to push through uh, with ease and you're kind of wrestling with the uh, with the knuckle assembly, use a slimline socket like this one and then use it in the end and as using your hammer just tap it and it will push that axle right through making your life a lot easier. So here's a brand new ball joint from Honda um, part number 06523-S84-415 uh, interesting note on these ball joints and this might apply to aftermarket as well um, and no one's going to know better than the actual manufacturer of the car is this warning to replace the ball joint refer to the appropriate service bulletin if the vehicle ball joint is marked with a B on the bottom you cannot use the ball joint in this package instead you must replace the knuckle failure to follow this instruction may cause the front suspension to unexpectedly collapse hmm, that's kind of scary uh, well so what I did was to do the right thing and grind off any corrosion that was on this ball joint uh, using a little Dremel tool um, right there and the grindstone and a wire wheel and as you can tell from the markings I don't know how well you can read that um, it actually says MD15-5328 so there's a good close up there um, so that being said this ball joint is good to go how we're going to remove this is quite simple. It's called a hammer press, which is really uh, me putting this knuckle on a sheet of cardboard so you don't actually damage the wheel threads. Um, and I'm using a socket appropriately sized. I'm just going to jam it against this rubber boot here and just pound it right out. Uh, really straightforward process. And then we'll install the new one. So this is what it looks like as I'm pounding it out. So you can see the shiny part is where it once sat in the ball joint bore. So we're just going to keep hammering it until it pops right out. And make sure we clean the hole of all corrosion along the edges using, you know, a screwdriver as well as a Dremel with a wire brush, only a wire brush. You don't want to gouge and mess up the tolerances that hold the ball joint into the knuckle. Um, but yeah, pretty easy. So I just used the Dremel with a wire brush and cleaned it all the major sources of rust. And I even used a nail as well as a small flathead screwdriver to sort of dig out all the corrosion. Uh, and dirt that was building up inside this channel because of course the way the ball joint is designed is that it's supposed to sit in in that channel so make sure it's really clean I just dropped some dirt in there but you get the idea I think using some chassis grease just apply a thin film of grease to the inside of the ball joint bore as well as to the ball joint itself when you reinstall it and uh, when you insert it, you want to put it in a line as best you can. Just top the back side of the ball joint with a hammer just to start the uh, process of getting it in. And then we're just going to use a gigantic ball joint C-clamp to uh, squish that new one in. This is what the new ball joint looks like. So I said, that's why you had to get that groove clean because this will sit into that little groove channel. Okay guys, so I had a little bit of a mishap with my ball joint installation uh, press clamp. Um, I guess when I had lent it out to somebody, somebody had actually damaged it and I didn't realize it until now. So, I had no means, like how the clamp works is essentially it's like a gigantic C clamp where it essentially just squishes the back of the ball joint into the knuckle as using an impact gun or a wrench and just tighten it down. So, of course, these are just pressed in, so they're really not complicated. So, what I did was I just grabbed a, a piece of my install kit and basically put it up against the back of this and very carefully and took my merry time pounded this ball joint in with a hammer you don't actually need a lot of force because if you lube up this rubber boot and this the bore and the ball joint lots of chassis grease um, and you just take your time it will actually go in just fine now just to show you know the top of the ball joint's a little bit marred but I mean that's not gonna wreck it I mean that's just surface stuff 
and uh, you know to be clear I wasn't hammering on this end. You'll know it's installed properly when the flat part of this flange right here is flush with the knuckle bore. So um, let's put it all back together in the reverse order that we put it in and do the other side. Okay everybody so I spent about 15 minutes putting this all back together so we'll just walk you through a quick checklist of everything that we've done or all the parts that we've removed. So first and foremost most important thing lower ball joint uh, down in here Torque that 17 millimeter nut right down, lined up the holes, and installed a cotter pin to hold it in and bent the cotter pin around. I installed, reinstalled the upper castle nut, right, tightened it down, lined up the hole, installed the cotter pin, installed the steering component of the vehicle uh, right here, uh, tie rod end through, tightened it down, 17, mil 17 millimeter nut with a cotter pin, suspension fork. Right, with the 14 millimeter pass through to the shock, lined up the groove on the back, and then it's all bolted in. So you see, there's like no, essentially no gap. Down on the bottom of the fork, there is a 17, 17 millimeter pass through bolt and nut. So I used a wrench um, and uh, socket, tighten it down. 36 millimeter axle nut, tighten that down, and use the end of a socket and a hammer and just pounded this little end in so that it doesn't come loose. Uh, all the 10 millimeter screws holding down the ABS sensor wire, uh, brake line, bracket, lower ABS sensor wire, as well as the actual ABS sensor down in there that we had pulled out earlier. Applied a whole bunch of grease to it uh, and pushed it back into the bore. It fit in nicely. And then last but not least, bolted in the uh, two 17 millimeter uh, caliper bolts uh, back onto the steering knuckle. So, you know, went through everything. I made sure that I triple checked uh, everything to make sure that they were all tightened up nice and snug. Um, and so now we have a new lower ball joint and hopefully this car will go at least another 150 or 160,000 kilometers before it needs uh, replacing again. Anyways, I hope you found this video informative and useful. Rate, comment and subscribe.